Well, as Super Bowl week is upon us, we can't begin to talk, talk about how excited we are talking uh, with Knowles fans everywhere uh, about all the great things going on around Florida State football. And obviously, this is a big week with Super Bowl Sunday in Las Vegas. A recent former Knoll, Derek Nottie's playing in his fourth Super Bowl, but a Knoll that all Florida State fans know very, very well is with us. He played in four Super Bowls, a part of the Steel Curtain defense with the Pittsburgh Steelers. JT Thomas is with us on the show today. JT, it is a pleasure, sir, to talk to you during an exciting week for all football fans with a Super Bowl right around the corner. First question, how are you doing? What are you up to right now? And and, and what's this week like for you as the guys played in so many of these? Well, um, what I'm doing right now, I'm, 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 I, you know, I'm a guy that I don't believe in retirement, so I'm transitioning. I believe in transitioning, so I'm always working. But um, I was in the restaurant business for 30 years, Applebee's primarily, Burger King's, uh, Red Hot and Blue Southern Grill, uh, Crazy Mocha Coffee. Uh, but and I tried to get out, but I didn't. Um, I thought I was out. My wife said, you're not out. I'm in the room business. And I work for the company out of Key West, matter of fact, called Papa's Polar Rum. And I'm the Pennsylvania ambassador. What that means, I do ambassador things. I go around, and do, I do tasting, hugging, and kissing. That's all I do. So, so, so there's no learning curve, but it, it keeps me, I guess, in that restaurant environment. Um, but I'm their ambassador for Papa's Polar Rum that we came into this state, Ohio and Pennsylvania, uh, or the last two states in the union, probably about a year and a half, a year and a half ago. So I'm spreading joy and the spirits. There you <laughs> so go. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> there you go. JT, what's this week like? Does it does it bring back a lot of memories for you? What what comes to mind? What are the, the, the juices I would imagine uh, start flowing again with excitement around this time of year? You know, uh, the Super Bowl is, I guess, for athletes and really for most uh, football fans, it, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like the second coming of Christ, <laughs> but it happens every year for the most part. And But for me, it's very exciting. It brings back the memories, obviously. And um, although, you know, the game has changed, time has changed, but the, uh, the thrill of it, the excitement of it, and the purpose of it hasn't changed. And I think it has... Uh, because of technology, it's, it's much bigger than uh, when we play. It is much bigger because of the the media platforms that you have access to. And, and they've done an excellent job in marketing this product. It is one of the probably the best products probably in the world. You know, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. And based on the revenues generated, it speaks for itself. Definitely. Yeah. You were a part of. The, the the great Pittsburgh Steeler teams, uh, so many amazing uh, teammates, names that, oh that you God. played the yeah. game with, uh, coaches, right? And you Definitely. are a part of Super Bowl 9, 10, 13, and 14. Mm -hmm. When you reflect on your experience as a, a part of one of the great, if not the greatest dynasty in the yeah. history of the National Football League, what kind of pride comes out for you when you think about your accomplishments with that team well it's great and you got it right the greatest uh you know um and i say that uh you know going in the super bowl uh with 10 you know we, we had 11 all pros on defense starting what team have 11 all pros not count with bradshaw the franco harris this swan stalwart yeah uh to look back at that time we weren't cognizant of the talent we were just young men playing football but when you look back in the comparative analysis of I mean, 11 all pros. Imagine trying to afford that today, you know, it'll, it'll tear the salary cap up. But at the time, I, I think fading time intersect, and we had um, just some great players, the the time, and all the stars lined up, and and really we created something that was so big here because it kind of catapulted the, the city out of the exodus of the steel mills. Because the same time we were coming here, the steel mills were leaving, and then when I got here, this was called this, I guess, like the Seneca Valley of, of, of the era of the United States, because you had, uh, I think it's the third largest corporate headquarters here, you know, and this was the steel capital. So you can imagine when that happened, we became the salvation for this area, and we, we became iconic because now the people of this region had something to hold on to, uh, have to take pride in. So... Uh, 
not being cognizant of what was this transformation, you, we look back and even today, you know, I get probably 20 to 30 football cards and pictures that get signed every week. And so this, I said, this is crazy. <laughs> they know more about me than I do. And it blows my mind. And it's good. I got a stack over here now. I say, well, they want me to sign this, sign that. And I said, wait a minute. These guys, I mean, their father may know me, <laughs> you know, or grandfather, you know. But that is what is here. And, and the Super Bowl brings back all those memories, um, those great games. Um, but for us, the Super Bowl was a party. It was a time to relax. Um, we, we didn't take it seriously like some teams. Like when we went to the Super Bowl, Dallas, and they would take the team out in the country someplace. And No, we were downtown on Bourbon Street 24-7 the night before the game. <laughs> because the idea was this here. If you weren't ready in one week, I mean, before now, the whole season, one week is not going to happen. And Chuck Nose thought, hey, you guys deserve this. Enjoy yourself. You know, we need to, we need at 48 hours start bringing it down to normal. That's all. <laughs> so for us, it was a big party, uh, deserving and 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 the guys you have, it was those relationships and those times that made this so great. And we never went into the game thinking we were going to lose, except the first game. The first game, we were young, 22, 23, and we were facing the Minnesota Vikings Super Bowl nine. And I never forget. Uh, the feeling. It, it was drizzling in uh, New Orleans at the time. I was in the tunnel, an introduction, and about 15 feet across were the Minnesota Vikings. And we were standing there, you know, uh, they looked like real Vikings. They had been raining, they had beers, most of them. You could see the, the rain in their beers, you know, and we wouldn't look at them. You know, we were scared. I mean, we had a 12th player on that team. It was fear. Fear was in the tunnel with us, and it was so quiet, and we, we wouldn't even look over there. So what happened, you know, we're very intimidated, and all of a sudden, Glenn Edwards, our free safety, um, who was the last guy to be introduced, he was standing between both lines in the back with his arm folded, and Glenn was pissed. We had no idea why he was pissed off, you know, in warm up. Well, yeah. one of the Vikings was also a FAMU player, teammate, refused to speak to him. And, and Glenn was just pissed. And we knew it. So he was standing with his arm folded in the tunnel. And it was quiet. Like I said, you could, it, it was quiet. You know, you thought you thought we was in a Catholic church. Anyway, all of a sudden, Glenn asked a question and answered the question. And this is what he said. He bellowed out, do you know what? And everybody jumped and turned around and looked back at Glenn standing in the middle of both lines. He said, we're going to kick y'all. At that point in time, the Steelers broke rank. Joe Green broke rank and, and started walking down by the Vikings with chewing them hanging out of his mouth, chewing the other hand, just looking at him. Jack Lambert bit into his upper gum because he had no teeth there, you know. And we won that game in the tunnel. We knew before kickoff that we had that game. So that was... Um, a moment that it was just waiting to complete the game because we won it in the tunnel. <laughs> wow. How about that story? Talking with the great JT Thomas, four-time Super Bowl champion with the Steelers, All-American at Florida State. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Uh, I want to ask you about Super Bowl X, mm -hmm. JT. Uh, it's the first matchup with the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. And you talk about two of the – amazing organizations in all of, of professional sports and you had an interception yes, in I did. that game in the second half in the third quarter off a of Roger stop yeah do you, do you vividly remember that play in your mind I, right now? I, 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 I don't vividly remember but I do remember it from the highlights uh, I, I do uh, I, I remember the coverage that was in at the time yeah it, it was uh, one of those moments uh, you know a turnaround moment I think for the most part and um uh, and it's ironically, I, I had a, a similar one in, in our first playoff game with um, Oakland Raiders and I went to our first football, uh, uh, which was the last minute interception. Yeah, when, when you're in a game like that, you know, um, uh, that hike and you got your parents, your brothers and sisters in the stand, it, it, it was awesome. But that was a tough game because um, Dallas was a very uh, 
smart team, great team, great talent, offense on both sides of the ball. And, you know, and they would consider, you know, the American's favorite team, you know, the whole nine yards. But, uh, but yeah, it, it was uh, one of those moments. And, and it's a game that for us, it wasn't a fear. We never approached a game afraid. We always uh, approached the game. Our mindset was when we break the lock, and Chuck Nose had us saying showtime. It was like a show that the, our pregame speech would go like, okay, guys, we work hard, we get a Super Bowl. The fans have spent a lot of money to come see us. Let's give them their money's worth. So the mindset was go out here and kick this ass and, 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 and go to the party after the game. And, and, and that was the mindset that we had approaching even the Super Bowl. It wasn't about losing the game. It was about we deserve to be here. We should be here. And there's no way in the hell they're going to win this game. <laughs> it was just, it, it never crossed our mind that we're going to lose the game. <laughs> but that was just how we orientated, had been indoctrinated the whole nine yards. Yeah. 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 And, and, and amazingly, you didn't lose no. uh, any of them, which is just a, a historic feat. You returned at Super Bowl thirteen. You played the Cowboys again. At that time, it was the first rematch. Rematch, right. Of, of, of two Super Bowl teams. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the, the storylines coming in? Was there talk of revenge from the Cowboys? Even oh, though most definitely. You know, um, it was a lot because we we knew these guys intimately. I mean, well, a lot of us played against something called like Drew Pearson. I mean, I'm covering, I knew Drew from college. You know, he played at Tulsa when I was, and they played at Florida State. So, yeah, there was a lot of revenge there, a lot of respect there. And, and that was a tight game because there was a winning catch where that tight end uh, drop the ball, you know. So uh, there was spent, an yeah. yeah, there was an opportunity there for them to win game. But I think when you look at it, you go back to physicality. They brought it. We brought it. Uh, they brought a lot of trash talking. So did so did we. But I think um, you know the cream like always comes to the top, you know. And I, I and we had just some classic uh, with Bradshaw leading the offense with his great wide receivers and. Um, the defensive team that we had was just kind of a, a just amazing bunch. Like I said, you got eleven all pros out there. What, what, what are you gonna do? You, yeah, you, you, you got you got some problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, JT in your final Super Bowl, you played in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Yeah. Against the Los Angeles Rams, they were a bit of a surprise, right? But yeah, they had Farragamo, the the, the the quarterback. They were surprised, and at that time we were a little, our teeth were getting a little longer. That was the toughest because now we, we're at that age 30 ish, you know, <laughs> and 32, 33. Uh, that was our toughest Super Bowl. It was a very tough game out there. But, uh, you know, you know, Hollywood is Hollywood. Uh, we, 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 uh, every night we went from Newport Beach to, to LA. <laughs> so we didn't change the routine. It was a party and we got ready by 40 hours for the game. It became serious. But uh, it was our toughest Super Bowl, though. Well, when we when we finished that game, we felt the difference, and that's the first time I felt that wow, I've aged. <laughs> yeah, we've aged. Uh, we were we were beat at that game. We were spent at that game. It took a, it took a little more uh, in that yeah, game yeah. than any other. Yeah, definitely. Well, you were down at half, but you you found a way and got it done, winning thirty one to nineteen in uh, Super Bowl fourteen for your fourth World Championship in four tries. Oh yeah, and. Yeah. Bradshaw and John Stallworth came through with a couple of uh, uh, terrific passes on the hook and go, and uh, it was just uh, just just an amazing, uh, just amazing feat, no doubt about it, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so so outstanding, and as, and as you mentioned, that steel curtain defense, you and Mel Blount were named two of the best DB duos in the history of the National Football League, and you talked about some of the big name wide receivers you went up against oh, yeah. uh, during your time in that era. Well, yeah, he, he, even Fred Belitnikoff, I mean, uh, yeah. from, from my Florida State guy. I mean, uh, what a great receiver. Learned a lot from him. Um, probably one of the greatest receivers. And that uh, rivalry with uh, with Fred Belitnikoff and the Oakland Raiders was, was tough because I met Fred when I was probably about 19. He came down to Florida State and I saw him, you know, you know, I'm bigger, taller, faster. I said to myself, I kick it. Well, he came on the practice field. I'll never forget, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, man. But uh, but as you know, time, well, we, we we had a, some great battles, great competition. I won most of them, but nevertheless, uh, 
it, it, uh, you name the great wide receiver in the NFL, even Bob Hayes from FAMU. Oh my God! Now you talking about the road runner? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I've had the opportunity to cover some of the best uh, receivers uh, in history, you know, of the game, no doubt about it. And even Charlie Taylor, you know, he was at the end of his career. The Isaac Curtis is uh, uh, the Kenny Burrows from Houston, the Billy White Shoes Johnson, and you know, it goes on and on. Uh, some of the greatest receivers that uh, I think the game have ever honored. I've had the opportunity to uh, to challenge them and be challenged by them. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, at JT, unfortunately, I think you know Derek uh, Nadi is is a little banged up uh, right now, uh, unfortunately, but he's a, a part of the Chiefs right. roster. They're they're headed, of course, to their fourth Super Bowl in five years. It's so hard to get there. You, you always feel like you're mm -hmm. you're destined to go there when you have a great mm -hmm. team, but you never know if this is your last one. Uh, if you're Kansas City or if you're San Francisco, what would be to your advice to to those those guys that are playing in this game and uh, part of this week? Well, I think it's really to relax and play a game. Uh, it's treated like you no know, matter of fact. This should be the game that you, of all games that you relax in is this one. You know, because because the other games you're playing to get here. You know, so it's, it's knowing how to celebrate. This should be the most relaxed game. And I think guys psychologically make it the most tenseful game of their life. No, you're already here. You, you, you're in the Sugar Bowl, baby. Come on, you don't ride, you, you got to heaven. Come on, let's enjoy this thing, you know. Let's fly around on the, on the cloud, drink sweet tea and eat chicken wings, you know. <laughs> you don't get all, but I think guys tense up and don't understand that. And I think uh, the team that's going to win this I think it's the team that probably is going to be the ones that obviously make the uh, the less mistakes and the more disciplined team. If, if I had to pick a winner, I would say KC. Uh, All right. Sir. Yeah, and the reason for that, they've been there, uh, is deja vu. And I think the biggest difference, I look at the quarterback, I think in terms of the 49ers, their team is what makes their quarterback. With the 49 or with the uh, Chiefs, I think Mahomes make the team. And that's the difference there. So now, by saying that, you need a leader in the Super Bowl. Someone who got to lead. And and every game, there's leaders at different times, and they step up. But in this game, there's always one big leader in the Super Bowl that steps up. It's only one. It's not two or three. It's one. You yeah. know. And so... Who's that leader that can step up that has control? Mahomes. Yeah. Um, Purdy, uh, he, he's good because the team is good. Uh, if the team step up, which is, uh, that's a high probability in a game like this, the whole team is not going to step up. <laughs> so, no, it can be some guy step up, not the team. But you got a key player that can step up and will step up. It could it, normally it's the quarterback or a wide receiver, someone that really controlled that scoring as, aspect of it. Um, or if there's the defensive backs that pick it off, you know, that's a step up. But it's one individual normally step up in the Super Bowl. That's why they have an MVP, a real MVP. And I think uh, if Mahomes stays healthy and, uh, and he's, he's comfortable uh, more so, uh, I look, I give Kansas City the, the edge in this one. Yeah. I like that breakdown. I like that analysis from the great JT Thomas. Before I let you go, JT, I'd be I'd be remiss if I if I didn't uh, talk to you and obviously uh, discuss February uh, is is Black History Month, and mm -hmm. you of course the first African American to play a varsity FSU football game in 1970, an All American and a, a part of a, a great group of men that paved the way mm -hmm. with Charlie Hunt, Eddie McMillan, and Bobby mm -hmm. Anderson. Here at Florida State University, um, you know you're you're a trailblazer uh, along with Charlie, Eddie, and Bobby, and yeah, and you guys paved the way. Uh, it has to be a huge point of of pride uh, from your perspective, I would imagine. Yes, it is. I was, uh, you know, Charlie just celebrated his birthday uh, uh, this month, a couple of days ago, and it is because we look back in terms of uh, it was very tough, the difficult the times that we came through. Uh, right now. Um, um, the, the young guys, obviously, you kind of paved the way uh, um, because it was, it was a very difficult time. We were part of the transition, the transformation. And um, 
it's something that people take for granted, you know, because you're asked to be a, a student, an athlete, and at the same time, you, you're entering into a, like a foreign land. And so the idea of being accepted, um, um, learning, and, and there was a lot of great players around us that supported us, but a lot of people don't know. You know, there are some players that made our, oh my God, transition into that thing. You know, I can name, you know, it's about, if I say I had to pick about seven, eight players that, that supported us and that were responsible uh, through sh uh, tough time, uh, start with Barry Smith, Dan Whitehurst, David Snell, you know, Clint Parker. Uh, I'm trying to think who else that were, uh, Strickland, um, uh, Paul uh, Wagowski, you know, I mean, I mean, um, Oh, and, and, and not forget uh, Ron Wallace and J.W. McKinnon. These are my two homeboys. You know, we're both from Macon. So, I mean, uh, those guys were around us a thousand percent, supported us. I mean, um, and, and really, I'm going to say it, it, the tribal leader was Barry Smith. Barry Smith was kind of like a casual, quasi-hippie, didn't give a crap about what nothing. You know, it, you know it's kind of like... Uh, on, on the Dover Gillis show, that old history series, Maynard, Maynard Gillis, you know, whatever. But Barry was probably the the guy that um, kind of uh, gave us insight, gave us support, and then White Rest. But those are some of the guys that you know that really supported us. And they will not be mentioned in history, but in our hearts, uh, without them, you know, just making that transition. And, and we said, you know, the late 60s, the early 70s, we had to be in the war, you had drugs going on, you had the civil rights movement going on, uh, you had people um, uh, streaking through the place naked. You know, it, it, was, it, it was a lot of wild things. And we're so thankful for FSU and having an opportunity to transition it, not ourselves, but transition that arena of FSU into what it is today. Yeah. Yeah, so we're honored by that and grateful, yeah, for the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. Well, I tell you what, we thank you in, in so many ways, and we wanted to, to reach out and connect uh, four Super Bowls, four World Championships, four rings. Are you a part of the great Pittsburgh Steelers teams? And um, pretty impressive stuff, for uh, to, to say the least. So thank you, JT. We thank appreciate you, your appreciate time, it. and thanks for coming on. Thank you, man. God bless. Take care.